If you're here, please hit the like button. It does help. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please make the no make sure the notification bell is turned on. I do have super chat. I do have stickers, and I do have donations if anybody feels like it, but they do not have to. This is for entertainment purposes only. Um, this is just going to be a discussion about what I know, um, what I've been taught by spirit, what I've been taught by other mediums, what I've been taught, what what is going to be guided in what I say. Um, because usually whenever I'm talking about stuff, it's it's usually guided if I'm I feel like I need to say it. Um, there is a show that I always suggest to people. It used to be free, uh, but it's I think it costs now, but it's on Amazon Prime. It's oh Life to Afterlife Tragedy by Design. It's got almost and I will talk about some of the stuff that I learned off of there as well. It does talk about soul contracts and things like that. So if you're not an open person, this this <laughs> this is going to be kind of weird to you. So make sure you have your mind open as we talk about these things. And remember that this is not coming from a human level. Okay, this is coming from a soul level. This is coming from we, humanity is different because we have the negative feelings. We have the negative thoughts. We have all the negativity that we experience down here on earth. Okay. Um, but our soul is, is a lot different. Okay. We don't, our soul is basically pure for the most part. You know, there are the ones that are the darker souls that does happen, but we write our blueprints before we ever come to earth. A lot of people think, Oh, that's, that's crazy. You know, whatever. You have to think of this not from a human perspective when I'm talking to you about this because you will be like, what the hell? All right. So think of this as like from a spiritual standpoint. Okay. So we write our blueprints before we come and in the blueprints are our soul contracts. Soul contracts we have are with whoever um, we meet in our life that is substantial. Um, they can be, they can be little contracts. Like it can just be someone that comes in to teach us a lesson about something. And when that lesson is learned, that's when the relationship ends. So when it comes to soul contracts, they're not always happy contracts. Okay. Okay. And this is going to get into missing persons, murders, and things like that. Okay. So even murders, murderers and those that they've murdered have soul contracts. The souls decide that they're going to go through that with each other before they come here. And there's usually always a reason. Sometimes it's there's a lesson that needs to be learned. Sometimes it's a lesson for the world. Sometimes it's... Um, and I'm getting the chills, so that's truth. Sometimes it's a karmic thing, okay? So whatever the contract that we choose to have with people, it's for our highest good and at that moment when we're on spiritual being. So we discuss our, and I know that spirits here, guides are here because they're giving me chills as I'm talking about this. So before we're, 10 likes, but yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> so before we're born, we go and we write our blueprint that includes our soul contracts. And everything is okayed through our spiritual guides and through the higher power and everybody before we come here. They make sure that they talk to us and tell us, hey, are you sure you want to go through that? Are you sure this is something you want to experience? And on a higher soul level, we understand the spiritual lessons behind it, okay? And we understand what we want to go through with that person and why we want to go through it with that person. So just like I was trying to explain about Summer, yes, we do want to know what happened to her, but she already, she is already okay with it. When we, when we pass, we go through a life review, okay? And we're reminded of every life that we've touched, good or bad. Um, we feel any pain inflicted. 
We feel any happiness inflicted. We understand every single lesson and why we decided to learn it. We understand at that moment, we remember why we chose our parents, why we chose the people we had in our blueprint, why we chose our soul contract. So she's already gone through that. She's already healed. She already understands it. So it doesn't matter to her that her body has not been found. She knows if it's going to be found or not. Bodies are found if they're meant to be found. And if they're not, there's, there's a reason for it. Um, not everybody can be found in the world, unfortunately. And we have lessons, good, bad. We still have free will, okay? So we can write contracts with someone and we can always break that contract. Um, just like we can break our blueprint by sometimes committing suicide. Although sometimes we do put suicide in our blueprint for an exit point and saying that things are too tough and we just can't handle it anymore. <laughs> and I know sometimes people have, have felt that way at times and sometimes they're able to push through it and sometimes they're not. So when it comes to a soul contract and a murderer and a victim having a soul contract, they already know before they come to earth what their soul contract is. Of course, when we come here as humans, we don't know, right? And so when they're going through it, they're, they don't understand why they're going through it. But when they get to the other side, they're then reminded in the life review. Okay. So no matter what the soul contract is, I know people think from a human level, like, why the hell would I choose to be murdered by this person? Why the hell would I choose to go missing by this person? You know, why would I, why would I do that? From a spiritual standpoint, there is, like I said, usually a lesson. If you look at all the, if you look at some of the cases, some of the cases bring the world together. A lot of light. Um, some of the cases they they show they show humanity in a good light because people start coming together, right? A lot of times. So sometimes it's for a bigger reason, and sometimes it's for a karmic reason, and sometimes it's for just whatever lessons they needed to learn. Now, you know, people can go off their path. That's always true, depending on what the genetics are when they're born, which, of course, they choose their parents. So they know the genetics that they're going to have. Um, but sometimes our life circumstances can cause us to be different than what we thought we were going to be, um, you know, such as abuse and things like that. However, we do know before we come that we're going to the parents that are going to abuse us. I know that's hard to wrap our head around, right, our, our brain around. But remember, we're coming from a higher perspective. We're not coming from a human perspective. And they look at it as we're going back to spirit. There is no death. So they're not looking at it as a tragic death as everybody else because they know that they're going back to the other side where it's paradise and everything's okay. The earth is just a school. It's just a lesson. And when we pass away, I don't even like the word death because it's not, there is no death. We are energy and energy does not die. So therefore we go back to the other side and they know that when they make the soul contracts, a lot of times when tragic tragedies happen, it's, they don't feel the pain inflicted. Their soul leaves before they experience a lot of that trauma. So, you know, when you say, when there's these brutal murders and stuff, a lot of the time this the soul doesn't really experience it, it leaves. So that it doesn't have to experience it. It doesn't have to um, go through so much trauma to heal from. But if there is trauma felt, then, you know, they go over to the other side and they are healed from it over there. Sometimes it takes a lot, uh, you know, more healing depending on what had happened. But a lot of times the soul leaves. So car accidents, things like that, the soul's gone before impact. Um, we have exit points. So we choose when we're going to pass. Now, we have to look at it as everybody's going to go one way or the no another. 
can't say unfortunately because I hate Earth. So <laughs> we are not meant to live forever in a human body. Our human body does not allow it. You know, we have we have things that fell on us in a human body. So regardless, we're going to pass away in one way or another. Sometimes our soul contracts, you know, that's just the ex exit. The soul contracts kind of coincide with your exit points, depending on if that's that's part of the soul contract that you you chose with that person. Um, soul contracts come in relationships. OK, so usually when the soul contract is over, that's when the relationship ends. Just because you get married doesn't mean you have to be together forever. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to put up with a bunch of mess and be unhappy. It's okay to leave a relationship. That means that you're no longer vi vibrating on the same frequency and that your soul contract is over. Okay. So I always tell that people have free will. People can be brought into your life, but it's up to you what you do with, with that connection. That's where the free will comes in. And that's why I always tell people like psychic readings. Usually I'm able to give accurate information. However, people have free will to change their circumstances. So although we do have these soul contracts and stuff, there's still free will. So that, and that's kind of, you know, the choices that we make can be put into the soul contract. So whenever we make these, we're looking at it as, oh, we're going to go to the upside anyways. You know, we're going to, we're going to choose a lesson with it or clear karma with it or cause something big to happen in the world. Okay, um, because we're all going to pass in one way or another, right? Uh, whether it's, you know, a car accident, it's natural causes, it's drowning, it's whatever, whatever it may be, we're all, we're all going to the other side. No one lives forever. And we come back again to learn different lessons. All, when it comes to suicides, um, People, like I said, sometimes it's in their blueprint. Sometimes it's their exit point, but sometimes can't handle it and they break their contract. That means they have to come back. When they come back, the next time they're learning the same lessons because they gave up on their contract. It was too hard for them. So normally they have to go through the same kind of lessons again. When it comes to people that are addicts, okay, addicts choose the hardest lessons on the earth plane. So they chose the hardest thing to overcome. Sometimes they overcome it, sometimes they don't. But that's the lesson that comes with it. Um, Earth is the hardest place to be. Okay? It's not a walk in the park. And as you can see, people's lessons are kind of evolving with the world and how the world is changing. The world is getting crazy. Um. So it, it's all about just different things that we decide we want to learn, karma that we want to clear, and soul contracts that we have. We do choose our parents before we come. They are in our blueprint. So I'm going to get on a little bit of a touchy subject here. You can have your own beliefs on what I believe. This is what I was taught from spirit. This is what I understand it to be. Every medium says the same thing. Um, I don't think we can all be wrong. Okay. So... When it comes to people losing a baby, whether it be abortion, miscarriage, stillbirth, something like that, the baby already knows what they're going to experience with their parent. Whether it be a miscarriage because maybe their development is not right, there's something wrong, and so they miscarry so that you don't have to deal with that. Maybe they don't. Maybe they decide that they don't want you know, whatever was wrong with their body, maybe they don't want to live a life like that and they decide to, you know, not come to earth. That also could be, you know, um, there's a lesson. All right. So miscarriages, there's a lesson, can be a lesson as well. Um, and so when it comes to abortions, it's the same kind of thing. The baby picks the parent. The baby already knows that parent is not going to have that baby. And they know. So they know that there's a lesson for the child and a lesson for the human. Okay? So they just go back to the other side. 
they're looking at it from a human, from a, not a human perspective, from a soul perspective. They are, they know that they can come back anytime they want to. Same thing with a stillbirth. There's usually something wrong with the body. There's usually a lesson. It's, it's all the same for everybody and they can come back and they do come back. Sometimes they come back when the person gets pregnant again. Sometimes they come back to someone in the family. They can come back. I've seen it happen in readings um, where people, you know, they have a miscarriage or something and they end up having the same soul the next time around. So, you know, uh, it's hard. It's sad. Loss is always hard. Loss is always sad. But I've come to look at it from a different perspective because we're all going to go there. We miss the physical presence. We miss, then that's what's hard is we miss their physical presence. We miss being around them. They're still around us. It's just a different way, right? Um, and a lot of times we miss the way that they're around us. It can be a just a random thought about them, just a random memory about them, a song that reminds you of them. Um, anything really that reminds you of them can be that. When you talk to them, they hear you. You don't need a medium to talk to them. They hear everything that you say and everything that you think. Okay, there are no grudges on the other side. There are no um, negativity. There is no blame. They understand their soul contract with you. They understand the lessons that you have to learn. They see everything from a higher perspective. So I know it's hard to wrap, wrap our brains around this as a human. But remember, we are a spiritual being having a human experience. Okay. And we've had human experiences for decades and ages. I mean, you can watch on, you can watch Ghosts Inside My Child or any of the YouTube videos that talk about reincarnation and the kids knowing stuff, there's no way they could know. I mean, that right there is proof. You have the old souls that come and they know things that there's no way they could know about, you know, certain stuff. Um, and you know, sometimes you feel like an older soul. You feel like you've learned, you've learned and you've lived before and you're wise. That's because a lot of the times we bring this this to, with us. And sometimes kids can remember their past lives when they're born. And some most of the time they, they don't because we are we usually, you know, forget that because we we kind of forget that we have a connection with the other side. As kids, the reason why kids are more sensitive is because they just came from over there. So they they are they are still kind of connected to the other side. They still understand. That's why they can see spirit. Um, and that's why they're more sensitive. And sometimes I, they grow out of it. Sometimes it comes back. It just depends. Everybody has a connection to the other side. Um, and when it comes to these people that have the soul contracts that say they, they murdered someone, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to hell and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're a bad person or they're a bad soul, I should say. As a person, maybe they were a bad person, but that's because they really screwed up with their lesson and maybe they chose, there's there's a couple reasons for that. They could have screwed up their lessons, went another direction, or they chose to be like that in their soul contract so that they could learn how to be, like learn from a different perspective. Like, we're not always good. We have to learn the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? We have to learn from different perspectives. If we're good all the time, if everything's so easy, we're not learning anything. So a lot of times they have to learn from that way. And, you know, I know, like I said, I know it's hard to understand, just like the evade, the evade shooting. It's hard to think that the kids chose to be in that situation and that he chose to be the one to do it. It's hard to understand that. But from a spiritual perfect per perception, from a soul perspective, from a higher perspective, from when we are on the other side, they're looking at it as there's a reason behind it. You know, um, people did come together. Um, I, I mean, I really don't under know, understand that would be in their soul contracts. And they would know, you know, why they chose that. But from there, they know that they are going back home. They know that there is no death on a soul level, right? So when we're looking for people and we're, we're talking about 
you know, trying to find out who did this and who did that and where this person is, it's for us. It's not, I mean, it can be for them, um, but it's usually for us and for their family members to have peace about it uh, and for justice because the justice comes in with the karma, you know. Um, but if something's meant to happen, you can't stop it from happening. If you have an exit point, you're going to hit that exit point. I, From what I understand, we have three exit points. That's why you see people that, um, okay, say they're in a car accident and they should have totally passed away and they don't. Okay, that was an exit point and it wasn't their time. You see the ones with the near-death experience, exit point, wasn't their time, they're sent back. Um, we have exit points that we could miss, and but when it is time for us to go, we go. We pick, our, on a soul level, we pick the, the time and the day and everything that we're going to go. That's why you see um, loved ones that are very sick and they're in bed and, and they pass away when you leave because they don't want you there when they leave. It's too hard on a human level. Okay, because they, they love us. That's why, okay, I always say that my husband saved me when he chose to go. I, I feel like he chose to go to save my life because, and I wrote my book about it. It's r and Love, A Twin Flame Story. It's on Amazon Prime. It does talk about the spiritual lessons of abuse, alcohol, you know, drugs and alcohol and things like that. We had a soul contract. We had to go through that together as hard as it was. And we're twin flames and twin flames always have and always pick the harder lessons. Plus the darkness loves to try to not let the twin flames be together because there's just too much light. So he was drinking and he was coming up there, I believe to hurt me and I feel on a soul level, I was protected and that's why he passed away. Now, he was a very different person when he drank and all of that. He was not the same person as I, you know, you, I'm sure that you've known people in your life when they drink, they're totally different people than when they don't drink. Um, so, I mean, but that was something we had to go through and it's hard to, it's hard to think that anybody would choose to go through that, but we do, we do all the time. We do all the time. And maybe I was a man in another life and I abused him. I mean, or I was an alcoholic or whatever. Like, that's where the karma comes in. And that's where the karmic soulmates come in. Um, someone else described it as someone watching you go to the bathroom as far as not wanting people there when they pass. Yeah, they don't, they don't want, it's too hard for them. You know, sometimes they like us there and sometimes we just won't leave. So they have no choice. They're ready to go and they go. But when they pass, it is a beautiful moment. Um, they are met with their guides, their loved ones. All the loved ones they never met, the loved ones they didn't meet, the loved ones from past lives, any pets that they had, um, their guides, their angels, everybody gets them and takes them to the other side. Now, there are people that go into the lower astrals and that is yeah just one second and that is when um when people go into the lower astrals it's basically they're running from the light so we come here to learn lessons right and sometimes we don't realize that we don't realize our soul contract because we haven't gone to the other site i mean we haven't gone through our life review and everything yet right so sometimes when they pass away they uh are afraid of judgment and they run from the light and they feel like they kind of deserve it so then they go to the darker realm or the lower astrals so that's a little you know that's a little different they don't under they don't understand because they're still kind of in that human mindset if they haven't gone to the other side and gone through their life review okay 10 9 go ahead and ask your question when people die horrible horrible torturous deaths can they slowly their body before actually passing so that you don't feel pain i've heard mixed i yeah i just i just explained that were you not here Yes, the soul does leave the body before they actually pass so that they don't feel the 
so that their soul is not traumatized. Yes. And if they do, for some reason, have a more traumatized soul, then they go into like a cocoon and they go through a healing stage. But, um, yeah, your soul leaves first. So like if you're going to crash in a car accident, your soul will leave before impact. If you're about to be murdered in a horrible way, your soul will leave before that happens. So yes, correct. Because it was in his soul contract, you guys, you guys chose him to be your dad, whether he was going to stay or not. And again, we have the free will. So he had the soul contract with your mom, but maybe that soul contract ended. Um, there, I mean, there's lots of different reasons. Sometimes, you know, people with their free will get a little, uh, um, what's the word? Selfish. Um, Yeah, I mean, we still have our free will, right? So um, people can be, that's the thing with relationships and why I don't really like relationships readings all that much because people can be put into our lives, but it's our free will that kind of decides everything other than the soul contract. So we can have soul contracts with people, but, you know, we still have the free will. So that soul contract would have been with your mom. It would have been with you guys. You guys would have all made that soul contract before any of you were born. And you would have all decided it together. Probably for the lessons of having to, you know, grow up without a dad and all of that. I know it's hard to understand from a human perspective. But from a spiritual perspective, there's something that you wanted to experience and he wanted to experience. And sometimes... When this whole contract ends, that's when the relationship ends. That's what I always tell people. You know, they, sometimes people come to me and they're like, well, there's this relationship and, you know, they're all broken up over it, you know. But the reason why they, the reason why a relationship ends is your soul contracts ended and you're no longer vibrating together. We attract those that we vibrate with. So, you know, whenever, um, like you have friends and then all of a sudden like something happens and you're not friends with them anymore, you're no longer vibrating on their level anymore. I do, Donna. It's about acceptance, I think. Because I just heard acceptance in my head. Because look, the times are changing and that has to go with the life lessons that we chose to make. So regard you know we knew that the times were going to change like this before we ever came but that's why okay so for instance and this is kind of rewinding a little bit but this is one of the stories that i remember from um oh of course anytime donna you're there for me so one of the things that I, I remember from the show that I, I told you guys to watch, Tragedy by Design, is they talk about how a bunch of people passed away in a flood, okay? And they talk about how all those people chose in their contracts to pass away in the flood so that um, it could bring light into the world, you know? Because a lot of times through tragedy, there are beautiful things um, because people, and I'm getting the chills, people really come together and people unite, and that's what it was about. They chose that to happen so that people would unite and, you know, there would be more light, love, and understanding. Um, and so that's why they chose that in theirs. And that's just an example that I remember from that. Uh, they do go to their funerals, but they don't care what happens to their, they don't care what you do for them. They don't care. They don't care what happens to their body. They don't care if they're buried. They don't care if they're cremated. They'd rather be cremated because there's no point to put to put their body in the ground because when you when you burn something you get rid of all the negative crap you know so um they don't care they go to be around loved ones and just to see things but they don't they don't care what you do um before or after they don't care what you do with your their physical things because they don't need it anymore um they can't go anywhere with money so they don't care about that there, sorry, there are some things they'd like to hand down, but whatever you guys do with stuff, they don't really care about it because they have no need for it anymore. 
that's all physical things that belongs to the physical earth and they don't like i said if, if there's a body that's not found it doesn't mean i mean yes there are souls that get trapped okay that does happen but it's not because their body's not found it's not because they pass a tragic way it's just they sometimes get stuck um it's or they don't want to go you know they don't understand that it's something more it's something better on the other side because there i've crossed people before and i've had to tell them look there's no reason to be afraid because they were afraid you know there's no reason to be afraid it's so beautiful over there that's where your family is like i've had to tell especially children that um that it's okay to go you know they're gonna be okay and yes and our pets are over there too and our pets also have soul contracts with us so the pets that we have in our lives chose um they they chose to, to spend that life with us for whatever reason their soul chose to come chose to be with us so they have soul contracts with us as well that's why some and they can be soulmates yeah that's why i was talking about melissa you must have came later they have soul contracts with whoever made them go missing So a lot of, like I was saying, a lot of the missing and murdered, they had soul contracts because on a higher level, a spiritual level, they wanted to experience that. That we're all going to pass away in one way or another, but they're learning a lesson together. They're clearing karma together. Um, and it's hard to wrap our head around. It's hard to wrap our brains around. I know. I understand that. But from a spiritual perspective, they know they're going to go anyways. They know that they're... Quit chasing a damn moth they know that they're gonna pass anyways you know what I mean? that they need to learn it's the karma that needs to be cleared and sometimes we have to have that soul contract like maybe uh, maybe the person that made the other person go missing um it was the roles were reversed at one time because we're not always females we're not always males and we're not always good um yeah, because this earth is the hardest place to come to, but we choose the hardest lessons, right? And I always tell myself when I'm going through a hard time, it could be so much worse. I could have chosen a much worse life. And so I remind myself of that. I try to remind myself all that time when I'm struggling. To break a soul contract so you won't have another life with them, um, do you tell them? Well, that's something you guys decide on the other side. It's not decided here. It's decided when both of you, before you ever come. So you're understanding what the soul contract is before you ever come to earth. You're understanding what their part in the blueprint is before, before you guys ever come. So that's something you guys decide together. I know, right? Um, I always say that too, but you have come back probably many times. And we always say we don't want to come back because... A lot of times people that are very spiritual, they still connect their spiritual self to the other side. I know I was talking to one of the people I was telling about this yesterday. Shazam was there and I was talking to someone else. So she's not here tonight, which is weird. But she was saying she was afraid of, of dying. And I, I, <laughs> I said, there is no death, honey. There is no death. We, we don't die. We lose our physical body. We're all going to go at one point in time. And we go to the other side in paradise we can do whatever we want it's all full of love it's all full of peace it's beautiful i mean the colors are vibrant i know i've seen it the buildings sparkle it's one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen the oceans are um are what do you call it uh are you know beautiful there's the the animals don't need to eat each other over there because they don't need to survive we don't need to eat uh, we don't need to sleep. I mean, it's like we're just with our loved ones and we're just chilling and we can do whatever we want. We can learn over there. We can we can learn whatever we want over there. We can evolve our souls any way we want to. Like if we want to just start painting, we can paint. If we want to sing, we can sing. We can do whatever we want. So, um, and more than likely you've had more than one lifetime with him, Shazam. Oh, was I was told I was a man in my last life. I agree and have read everything you're talking about. I have 53 books of Sylvia Brown and just a bad 
And this is just a bad campy trip. Exactly, Colette. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, Sylvia Brown was the first one that I ever read. Um, I actually... She has 53 books. I didn't know she had 53 books, though. But she was my very first book, and it was, I think, to the other side and back. Um, great book. Great book. I mean, I, I agree with about 19. There's a couple things I don't agree with, but um, great book. I mean, she was the one that helped me understand that the, ba oh, the whole thing about the babies. Hey, at least you love your husband, Shazam. <laughs> you got lucky. <laughs> yeah. I know. I haven't either. You know what? I read a lot of spiritual books when I started this, and that's why um, I, I like I know so much about it. And I had a lot of great teachers, and, you know, spirit has taught me. But um, there came a point when I started opening up to my gifts where I couldn't read anymore. Like, my ADHD just wouldn't let me read. <laughs> but I have so many spiritual books I never even, I never even read, and I wish I had. Um. Right. I don't think I have that one. And, you know, everybody's that's what worries me so much because everybody thought she was fake. And I don't know. But I mean, she wrote a lot of great books. I don't think she was. I think she had a good connection to the other side. I actually saw her a year before she passed on my birthday and she was wrong one time on a case. And they never they never let up on that. They never let up on that. People don't understand, you know, we do the best that we can. It's hard to tell sometimes if someone's alive or not. But they they never stop, you know, bad-mouthing her for that. It really sucks, and that's what I worry about. That's why I'm so hard on myself. I don't want to be wrong because I don't want to have to go through that. <laughs> but you have to remember that psychic mediums are only about 80%, 90% accurate. We can't be accurate on every single detail. We can't be accurate every single time, you know. Um, yes, Patty. Exactly. Exactly. So basically Summer decided, and I got the chills, so that's probably right. Basically Summer decided that she would sacrifice herself so that her brothers could get out. And that was something they all decided together. Did you guys just see my lamp go off? I don't think there's anybody by it. Um, but that's why I'm telling people, like, she was so weak last night. People need to just leave her alone for a while. When we connect to spirit, we raise our vibration. They have to lower theirs. That's why it can get draining. She drained the hell out of me last night. I have not been that drained, and I do a lot of readings lately, and I felt really good. But she drained the crap out of me. And because she was trying to use my energy to connect, and that's why it was such a crappy reading, because she was having such a hard time. Because everyone's connecting with her all the time. And you can't do that. You can't connect with a spirit over and over. I mean, how would you guys like it? If you're just over there, you're playing with puppies and cats and you're 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 living your best life on the other side and people just keep calling. Hey, what happened to you? What happened to you? Tell me what happened to you. Where are you? What happened? What happened? All the time. You know, and she's already healed from that. It's hard to go back over that when you've already healed from it. But not only that, it she has to lower her vibration every single time that she talks to someone and it's draining her. So I'm going to leave her alone for a while. Um she may never be found and she may be found that's going to be decided on what's meant to happen is going to happen you know <sighs> my po gave me many lives many masters it's about past lives five years ago that got me into this i had no clue no i know i read a book about past lives but i can't remember the freaking name of it um i cannot remember the name of it for the life of me it's miscarriage because they're not ready yes did, was that when you left? Because I talked about that. Um, so, like I was saying, miscarriages and the reasons why babies aren't born is the baby The baby knows that that's going to happen usually. There's usually a lesson with, um, with the mom, okay, even though it's hard. And sometimes there's something wrong with the body that they don't want you to endure and they don't want to in, endure. Um, like maybe they don't want to be like, maybe there's something wrong with their body. They don't want to be born with, and they don't want to have you to have to go through that with them. You know what I mean? Um, 
So, and they can come back. They can come back. You might already have one of your kids um, or all of them. Sometimes they come back. Sometimes they don't. Usually they do. Or they come back to someone in their family. Like it could be your grandkid one day. Um, we always have the souls we're meant to have. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, she doesn't. It's not going to affect her journey on the other side at all. Like I, like I said in my post earlier, finding them is for us and for justice. So the justice has to do with karma. That's kind of intertwined. If they're meant to be found, they'll be found in the way that they're meant to be found, right? Um, because, for instance, Stephanie, okay? So, Stephanie Parze, I had her location. I even had it screenshotted, and it was posted in the group. It was posted on my, my YouTube wall. I had the area screenshotted. I could not leave the area. I had said she was off of Route 9, and that's where she was. Actually, the dad was right there by the area and did not find her. But two boys walked and found her, and she was there for how many months? It was supposed to go that way. You know what I mean? Um, and usually when a body's meant to be found, it'll be found. And sometimes they aren't. But it doesn't affect their journey on the other side. But it's really it's really for us. It's, it's, it's for us to... It's really for the loved ones, okay, the us left behind, because we need that sense of peace, you know what I mean? So that's what it's really about, and for humanity, but really it doesn't affect them on the other side, no. I used to love her too, but totally done after she told their mother her daughter was, yeah, but that's what I'm telling you, Tammy, we're, we're 80 to 90% accurate, we are not going to be accurate all the time. There's been times I thought people were deceased because they were on drugs, and they were not. They were close to dying, but they were not. It's easily done. We are not, we are, we are not God. We are human with gifts and we are not perfect. So we are allowed to be wrong, even though that's my biggest fear of being that wrong. It happens. Okay. So it's very easy to misunderstand when you're communicating with spirit and so it's all on how we re all and how, like I tell people, it's all on how we take the information. So, you know, sometimes we misunderstand the information and sometimes you misunderstand the energy because like I said, there's been times I swore, but then I look back and I'm like, wait, I didn't see her passing, but I felt like she was. And it was just because she was so high on drugs and she was so close to OD that that's what I picked up. It happens. And live people are the hardest people to find um, because they just are. The energy is different. The reading's different. Um, I've been doing pretty good at that, though, but it's not my, I mean, I love finding the people alive, but it's not the easiest. It's, it's not the easiest at all. Um, yep. Amy, Danielle, it's probably the same soul. Exactly, Rogonzo. Trust the process. Yep, yep, yep. You're saying this happened to her to save her brothers. What about this happened? Was ha what was happening? Oh, they were all being abused. Yeah, they were all being abused. That's why they got taken away. And sometimes the soul of the baby will come as another child. Yes. Sometimes the soul will come back as another child. Yes. And if you don't get pregnant again, it can be a grandkid, it can be a niece, it can be a nephew. It's usually the same soul family. Low energy, malnutrition, or mental illness too. But she said the mom wouldn't ever see her again in this life. And that was true. She died before. Rest. I don't understand what you're saying, 10-9. Low energy, malnutrition, or mental illness too. But she also said the mom wouldn't ever see her again in this life. And that was true. Okay. You don't know that, though. It depends on how sensitive you are. It could be haunted. She might have had a different experience than you. Like, 
Okay, for instance, we went to the Cochise Hotel. No one that does paranormal investigations wanted to go in the place that we were at and do an investigation. They all wanted to be in the hotel. But let me tell you, we were pulled back there, and that was the heaviest energy, the most haunted, probably one of the most haunted places there. But they never felt it, and they never did an investigation there. It doesn't mean it's not haunted. Maybe you just didn't feel it. Maybe it just didn't happen around you. doesn't mean it's not true. Um, we don't know what they went through, but they got taken away. So that tells you they went through stuff. And I know what they went through from what Spirit told me. But, yep, exactly. Oh, Shazam's a great person. And that's another thing with our kids, right? Okay, so we can raise our kids the best that we can. But they have their life lessons and they have their soul contracts. So they're probably going to screw up. And we have to remember that we learn the way that they're learning. Um, so although it's hard to let go and let them do that, they still have their soul contracts and their life lessons and things they've got to go through. So. Oh, I see. I See? So she was right about that. But it's very easy to misread energy. It's very easy. Like I said, 80 to 90 percent. We are not God. We are not 100 percent. We are going to screw up. I will not get every case right. I will not get every detail right. It's just not possible. It's not humanly possible. And yes, that worries the hell out of me because I don't want to be like that where people are like, oh, you must be fake. You got you got it wrong one time. No, I either misunderstood the information. It was given to me wrong something. Um. It probably won't be, but I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree within the family. I agree. Family friend. I actually did a reading on John Bonet. It's just, I, I just get irritated because you see that people constantly EVPs all the time, EVPs readings. Like that's why I gave her a break or try to give her a break. But, you know, EVPs, readings, rods, all that's draining her. And they need to give her a break. She needs a freaking break. She is lowering her vibration to communicate with them all the time to talk about stuff that she's already healed from. Like, okay, people, we're, we're getting disrespectful and we're getting um, selfish a little bit, you know. What? Yeah, I chose to have a life with you. Don't ask me why. You're crazy. <laughs> I'm glad, Patty. I Spirit pushes the teacher in me, okay? Um, <laughs> every time I, I pull a soul path card, I get teacher. So I don't know. I think it comes along with it. I think those that, I think those that choose this work should are supposed to be teachers and they are supposed to teach us about or we are supposed to teach people about this stuff i feel like we're supposed to open minds we're coming into a different time actually i just gave a reading to someone and she was saying how her kid was special and i said yeah more um more children are being born that are sensitive and um because we need it right now we need it to bring light into the world so more special people are being born. It's the time for it. Um, uh, your thoughts of the psychic abilities can be learned or from birth. I know you can develop to an extent. Um, you, I mean, both. You can be born with them. They can run in families and they can be learned. We, Like I said, we're all born with a connection to the other side. Um, so and sometimes we have them and then we forget them and then we, we, we get them back. Um, for me, for instance, I know it runs in my family. I know my grandma was sensitive. My mom is sensitive. So my son is sensitive. My great grandma, I guess, was born with a veil over her face, which supposedly means you're psychic. I don't know. Um, back then it wasn't talked about. My grandma was all into that, you know, um, clairvoyant cards and all that. 
I I don't remember much. I don't remember much, but um, I remember feeling like I was watched when I was growing up. That's all I kind of remember. Uh, I I um, I develop after my tragedy, which I notice a lot do. There are a lot of, of mediums that do develop after a huge tragedy, a loss of a husband, a loss of a child, a lot a huge loss. Um, because they kind of open up, they want to connect. And so that's how they open up. And that's what happened to me. And so, I mean, it, you can learn. I teach development classes. I've seen people that end up developing and doing readings by the end of the class. So like I said, if you're interested in that, but everybody that is open, they have the potential. It might not be to the extent of someone else. Like we're not all the same. We don't all develop the same. We're not going to be... We're not going to all be the same. We're not going to all be gifted the same. We don't all communicate the same. So, you know, you, I try not to compare myself to others, <laughs> but I kind of do sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we're all going to be d gifted differently, right? We're not going to all be clairvoyant. We're not going to all be clairsentient. We're not going to all be clair clairaudient. We're, you know, it's just going to be different in how we work. There's some people that see spirit. I don't see spirit like that. I don't feel spirit like if spirit was sitting right next to me, I mean, I feel it through chills and stuff, but I wouldn't know they were here. But if I go to a haunted place, I feel it in my body. Like I feel like achiness and stuff. So it, we just feel differently. I mean, everybody's different. But it can, I mean, it's any of those things. Okay. Can spirit refuse to talk to a psychic medium? I've heard some say they can refuse. Um, they can. They don't have to. I mean, it's not written in stone to say that I'm going to let you channel me. Now, in the last almost 10 years, I've only had one spirit that would not talk to me. Well, actually, he did talk to me, but it was weird. It was like, um, it's like there's some kind of block there. I don't really know why. Like, he still gave me validating information, but it was not a reading like I normally give. I haven't had that problem. Um, but I connect off of pictures and things like that where... That's why I say we're not, we're not all the same. Like Matt Frazier will see a spirit or the spirit will come. I mean, I've had them. I've had them just, I'll be talking to someone. I'll feel pain and be like, hey, um, does this make sense to you? That kind of thing. But I connect differently than he does. So, yeah, they can refuse. I, I've never had it. I mean, I've never had it happen where they refuse to talk to me. And how he says you can't just call him. I've always just called him. So I don't know if that has to do with the different gifts or what, but they usually always talk to me. I usually don't have that problem, knock on wood, thank God. Um, because I'd hate to have somebody pay for a reading and then like can't reach their loved one. L luckily that hasn't happened. Like I said, just the one and it wasn't one of my best readings, but I was still able to get stuff. But that was the only time and it was really kind of weird. Um Lori, uh, well, I got someone that, that was a, I don't know if you've seen that reading yet, but her mom may have been involved in some way, but uh, her mom didn't sexually abuse her, like, uh, it had to be a man in that part. I got a worker, so... Can't the guides or whoever is listening or protector from people wanting to read her? Um, they can, but, you know, and, you know, that's the thing with EVPs, too, is it can be manipulated by negative energies. It can be manipulated by other spirits. You don't know who you're talking to. So that's why I'm not really keen on it. I like it. It's fun. Um, I enjoy it, but I don't use it for reading. It's not. I trust my channeling more than I do that because I've been doing this long enough to trust my channeling more than I do a spirit box. I like to use it sometimes for maybe validation, but that's it. Cause you don't really know who you're talking to. Um, but there are some people that, you know, they get some good stuff. I mean, I think, I think Summer wants to please, she's an eager to please kid. And, and so I think that's why she does it. I mean, I do think she likes to communicate and I don't think she realizes that she's really burning off her energy really like it was so I've never had that problem connecting to her ever. She's always been super, super strong. But for some reason, it was just like it was so hard. I don't really know why. And I could some of it could have been me, 
because I don't like to know things about cases because it kind of muddies the waters. And I do know. So it is the muddies. The waters are muddied a little bit. You know, and then you have people telling you, well, this person got that and this person got that. And then you're second guessing. So um, some of it was probably me, but I, I felt like she was very drained. Yep. And you can have fur babies, fur babies as your soulmates as well, as well as your children. Exactly, Colette. And I have, like I said, the, my friend, she said she was afraid to go. And I was like, why? Like, we don't, we don't die. We sh I call it pass away or <laughs> I even like the word graduate better. Transform. We're transforming from, we're just dropping this body that has all the physicalness and we're going back to the other side as a soul. So there's really no reason to, to be afraid. Um, and we get to be with all our loved ones. I, for one, am not afraid at all. Um, when it's my time to go, I'll go. And I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of it at all. Now, I am, I, I, and so I'm not a thrill seeker. That's different. <laughs> that's just not my cup of tea, but. Yeah, but there's more than that. She was uh, strangled with her underwear. So there's more. There's more than that. Yes. Do you think there's some physical gene? Yes. Like I said, I feel like mine was passed down. It can be. You can be born with it. It can be passed down, or you can develop it. It doesn't matter. We're all. We're all connected to the other side in some way. Um, I do know some of my past lives. You can actually figure out some of your past lives if you do like a meditation, like a guided meditation. They have some guided meditations on YouTube that you can do um, that uh, you can you can like learn your past lives. I've known I've, I've been I've seen a couple of them. I've seen a few of them. And I know that I was a gay man at one time. <laughs> Sorry, but I do. <laughs> And I've also, I've had a psychic tell me a couple things, which make a lot of sense. Um, I had one tell me that I was a lawyer, like a really successful lawyer, which I used to want to be a lawyer as a kid. So that makes sense. I love to argue. Um, I fight for justice. Like that's just, it makes sense to me. And there was another time she said like I was a, a gay, um, like a, a gay pirate, which I could totally see that too. Um, <laughs> and... I, I've seen native lives that I've had with my husband. So meditation, you can go into your past lives and meditation. You could do that yourself. What I would love to have done is a brain scan while I channel. That would be really awesome. I know that like Long Island Medium has and I think Tyler did, but I really, that would be cool. They can, they can touch you. I mean, it can feel like tingles or whatever. I mean... Like, there are negative spirits. Like, there are, like, the haunted places. You know, there's ghosts and stuff. I mean, that does that does happen. Oh. All I know is what I got in the reading. I can't speak for any of this about that. That's not what I was told, so... No. And, and that's the thing is it doesn't, I mean, just because people go to the vigils, it doesn't give her more energy. They take off the energy off of things that are around or us. That's why I was so drained. I, I've never been that drained when I've done a reading with her before. I used to get drained a lot more but because I've been doing so many readings. I, I like, it's almost like running you know how when you run a lot and your stamina gets up, it's like that. So I, I think I have more stamina now. Plus, since I moved, I don't know what was holding me back where I used to be, but I was tired there all the time. Besides, I was in pain and I had surgery and my pain is like way, way, way better than it used to be. But um, I was I was so tired all the time. But since I moved, I, I have a lot of energy. I don't know if it was it. there was something there that was like draining me or what. Weird. And mother and son. 
that was um, that was the sole contract. That was the sole contract. So just because they screw up does not mean they get punished in heaven. It doesn't mean that. It means that a lot of times they go to the other side. They realize why they did what they did, and they heal from it. It's like everything else. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't mean that they're tortured or anything like that because someone screws screws up. And again, that's that's the soul contract you made with them. And you you know, like I said, you can say, well, why the hell would I do something like that? Why the heck would I like have a soul contract like that with someone? But there's something that needed to come from it. And that might not have been the full soul contract. They might have done, you know, free will. and, But usually, I mean, you probably learn there's stuff you had to learn from it and the trauma that you had to go through to become a, you know, to kind of, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it kind of molded you to who you were. But it's just something you had to go through. I mean, it happens a lot. And I've, I've actually done readings with people who are molested by their dad and they they go on the other side and they get reading they've gotten a reading with me and that person was just saying they were sorry you know they were sorry for the mistakes they made as a human they messed up and as a, as a soul and a spirit being they would have never done that um so you know what i mean it's I've, I've had them come forward and, and say that they're sorry and stuff. And if they went to the light, then they're just healed. And when you go over there and you see her, you're going to forget all that. There's no, no negativity, no blame, no anything in heaven like that. There's nothing, there's nothing negative. It's all love. It's all peace and all understanding from a higher perspective that I wish we had on earth because I really get frustrated with closed minded people um, when there's proof all around them. Yeah, they usually do. They usually do because they, like I said, they go through the life review. So all the pain that she inflicted on you, she felt in her life review. She felt all that emotional pain, all that pain that was inflicted on you. She felt it. And that was part of the healing process. Right. And that's because she can see. I mean, I see in my head. I don't see with my eyes. I always wanted to see with my eyes, but I just don't. My mom does. My mom sees with her eyes sometimes. My son used to until he blocked it. But my mom's always telling me she sees my dog all the time. I'm like, I never see my dog. Why do you always get to see my dog? He sa she says he always stands there and watches her or sits there and watches her cook because he used to like to do that when he was alive. Um she hasn't talked about it in a while, though. But we went to, uh, where was it, Queen Mary, and her and my son both saw the lady in white head up, head somewhere, down or up the stairs, I can't remember. I was just opening up at the time. My son had went into uh, the boiler room, and he got so sick, and he got scared he had to leave. And that's how he used to be so sensitive, but he blocked it out. And maybe one day he'll come back to it, maybe he won't, like... He is such a strong healer that I had I had a baby rat that I got, and it had a really bad um, like respiratory infection, and so I gave it I gave it a little bit of you know amoxicillin and I gave it a little bit of chocolate which is supposed to help with that, and my son sat there and he held the thing and he he healed it, and he almost passed out because he healed it for about an hour. When he was done, that rat was not wheezing. That rat was fine. It was like, I was like, there's no way the medicine worked that fast. That's how good of a healer he was. He brought him back from the brink of death. And it makes me so sad that he just, like, blocks it now. But it was uh, it was pretty crazy. He's a pretty, he's a pretty strong healer. And I've been told we'll work together one day. But I don't know. But he, he... He, um, he was really strong at what he did. And he used to see spirit and everything. I actually, he gave a medium reading to someone, one of my, somebody that I know. And he got information I didn't get. Um, but he just, he doesn't believe in any of it now. So I hope that one day he comes back to it because he, he really has got some gifts. 
he used to just hold his hands over me and try to try to make me feel better, try to heal me. And then he hit a teenager and it was just like, damn it. <laughs> uh, my mom won't. My mom blocks it. My mom doesn't want to be. My mom was like, she felt a pain in her ankle out there at Tombstone. And she's like, I don't know how you like feeling this. I don't want to feel this. I, I, I chose, I choose to not do this. <laughs> she doesn't want to. My son, I don't, we'll see. I've been told by multiple people we will, but that's going to be his choice. I'm hoping, I'm hoping he comes back to where he was because he was pretty amazing. He just didn't, he's an indigo. He just didn't, didn't see it, I guess. I don't know. Um, my friend's daughter is psychic. She's a teen. She told her, when you die, you feel all the joy and all the pain you caused in your lifetime. Is Yep, exactly. Um... The man I was with for 18 years at Leaving God, we were so different. Was there a lesson for one of us? Because he would give me shit for reading psychic books. He had surgery and said he went to hell. Saw me burning in hell. I feel God showed him that because he did not believe. It's possible. Um, I mean, no telling what your guys' lesson were, but you chose to be with him for whatever reason and have those differences. It's hard to have a relationship when you have those kind of differences. If you guys don't have the same beliefs, it's really hard to make it work. And that was probably part of your lesson. I wonder if I blocked my now. When I was a kid, I saw a river of bees flying over my face. I saw it. Sounds weird. If you have ever heard of that, please tell me. They're definitely astral or something. Um, I don't know about the rivers of bees. <laughs> Um, we can definitely block it, though. People definitely do block it. I know that's what my son did. He blocked it. But his girlfriend's like me, and I'm hoping that he'll open back up. Yeah, that is pretty weird. I don't know. Yeah. And that was, the, you know, that was your lesson. We we choose these relationships for we got to learn from them, you know. I mean... A lot of people, we've had a lot of toxic relationships. And part of it is you need to realize you're toxic in, you know, in the soul contract. and Or you want to go through whatever you're going through with them. But, yeah, it's hard to be with someone that doesn't have the same beliefs. Like, I could never be with someone that didn't, like, it's hard enough my son is, like, he's more open to it now because his girlfriend is like me. So she's opened him up a little bit. Like, she likes to go to Tombstone and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm hopeful that that's that she's going to open him back up because me, I'm mom. I don't know crap. I'm fake, all that, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm hoping he will, but yeah, he's like that too. He, you know, he's always saying, I don't believe in God. And he used to, he used to pray. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know what happened. He lost his girlfriend, um, in a tragic accident. She was a long distance, but uh, she was hit by a car in Vegas, and they weren't together that long. And he was, uh, it was a couple of years ago, and that really hit him hard for some reason. So, um, I don't know, it was like, it's like after that, he kind of shifted to the not believing in God kind of thing. I hope he comes around, because I tell him all the time that God works miracles in my life all the time, him and spirit, like, I ask, and I pray, and I beg, and things happen. Yes, I do beg sometimes. <laughs> A psychologist I met told me about spirits in video games that look like bees. I didn't ask. I've never heard of that. So, I don't know. Not being funny, how common is it to return as an animal? I was thinking the other day, what the heck was Michael Phelps in, in a past lifetime other than a fish? Right. Um, I mean, you can. From what I understand, you can. From what I understand, you can. Um, you can come back as an animal. From what, I mean, I don't know. You would have to choose that. My light just flashed again. <laughs> 